Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is the Weather Extreme video, the afternoon edition. This is for Tuesday, the 19th of April. I'm James Spann. A warm, dry, sunny afternoon. Big storms, though, blowing up northwest of the state. And what about the chance of storms here at midweek? Let's talk about it. Let's go to some of the sky cam shots around the network this afternoon. First off from Tuscaloosa. By the way, the Weather Service just rated the uh, tornado that came through the city Friday of last week as an EF3. Now, that intense damage was not in the city. That was back around the Warrior River, down around Maxwell Loop Road, Maxwell's Crossings. But uh, still, and that's the way it works. A tornado was rated by its peak intensity along the track, and it was a 19-mile track. Uh, we'll check the uh, Demopolis sky cam, the uh, Tom Bigby. And by the way, here's an interesting shot. This is... This is from Friday, and that is a large torna a tornado taken from a tugboat uh, pushing a barge down the Tom Bigby, uh, down on the uh, choctaw Marengo County line. That's one of those tornadoes that did so much damage south of Linden. In fact, it might have been the, the one responsible for a, a tornado fatality down there. But I thought that was interesting. You don't see uh, tornadoes off a barge that often. And uh, thanks to Dr. Tim Coleman for passing that shot along. Here's the uh, water vapor satellite view, and uh, we've got one big batch of convection that's moving up through parts of the uh, well, Ohio and West Virginia, Kentucky. But the uh, new action is focusing back to the southwest in advance of that trough. But around here, we're high and dry. Uh, as warm as 82 in Tuscaloosa at 2 o'clock, Birmingham at 80, Anniston 81. We'll stay warm for the uh, next five days. And boy, you talk about a, a nation of contrast. We are bisected by a long wavy front all the way across the nation's heartland. North of that front, it's cold with uh, 30s and 40s. South of that front, it's warm with 80s and 90s. And yeah, something's got to give along that boundary, no doubt about that. And uh, sure enough, things are beginning to heat up. There's the uh, watch warning map, and we've got tornado watches up from northeastern Texas into central Illinois. Wind advisories ahead of that, and winter weather advisories back in the cold air. And there's the uh, lead tornado watch uh, this afternoon. Uh, that is in effect until 10 o'clock tonight for northeast Texas. That does include Dallas-Fort Worth up into uh, Arkansas and Oklahoma. And you can see that big storm developing a little east of Ardmore, Oklahoma, along the dry line. And, oh, you know those satellite shots are good. Check that out. I love that. That's the uh, visible satellite shot. And you can see that big isolated storm out there on the dry line at Ardmore, Oklahoma, well to the north of Dallas. Uh, you can see the, the shadows being cast there by that big tower. And that whole region is just going to blow up over the next couple of hours. It's always just incredibly gorgeous to watch, the, watch these visible satellite views on a day like today. There's the uh, moderate risk from near McAllister, Oklahoma, to... Almost Columbus, Ohio. Uh, some of the cities in that high, or moderate risk area would include Little Rock and Cape Girardeau, Paducah. Memphis really is in that, and Indianapolis. And uh, there could be some uh, violent long track tornadoes within there. And surrounding that, a slight risk that's the standard risk, really, all the way from uh, south central Texas, a little uh, east of San Antonio, up uh, to uh, Buffalo and Detroit. And that does clip the northwestern corner of Alabama for that squall line that will ease in here after midnight tonight toward the pre-dawn hours. But by then, it should be weakening greatly. And the uh, probabilities are way up there. 45% chance of uh, severe weather within 25 miles of a given point and the moderate risk. Now, tomorrow, there's the standard slight risk. Uh, through here, uh, north and central Alabama in the adjacent states, and then a slight risk to the northeast. And it's, you know, it's kind of marginal. Uh, the, the main risk would be from hail and gusty winds. Uh, nothing like last Friday. You can see we've got the lower end, 15% probabilities here. The better numbers are up north where the dynamics are better, uh, up a little north of uh, Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, up toward uh, New York City. So we'll watch things, and we'll talk about that as we go along. And then on day three, which is Thursday, uh, low-end 5% probability is well off to the west. Well, the rain numbers for the next five days, Alabama, again, a huge variation. You go from uh, basically Montgomery to Mobile, nothing, not a drop between now and Sunday morning. But Muscle Shoals may be picking up two and a half inches. And, uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's a battleground between that warm, dry ridge aloft on the Gulf Coast to that stall wavy front north of here. And that's probably a pretty good depiction there. Let's take a look. This is the uh, uh, 12Z GFS at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. There's the ridge 
across the deep south, and again down below that, the front is kind of sagging down in here uh, with a surface low near Buffalo, New York. And, of course, the, the better dynamics are lifting away. There's the instability values, and they'll be good. This is tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. The instability values are about 1,000 joules here. And keep in mind, I tell people this all the time, you know, in the summer, June, July, August, our instability values are often over 3,000 joules almost every day. You know, instability is just one part of the equation for severe weather. Uh, the shear is minimal. That's the uh, zero to three kilometer helicity. So obviously tornadoes would not be a problem tomorrow. And the uh, EHI numbers are pretty marginal. So again, some of the storms tomorrow could be strong, some hail and gusty winds. I don't think we have a big issue. Of course, Thursday, the front runs out of gas. It's kind of stalled out near the Alabama-Tennessee border. And there could be a few storms around uh, Thursday. Mainly, the, the better coverage should be over the northern third of the state. We'll mention a chance of showers and storms both days, both tomorrow and Thursday. But clearly, I think the most active and widespread rain will be maybe a little north of here. And then Friday, the ridge takes over. Just uh, kind of warm and dry with uh, mid-80s. 86 is coming off the GFS. It'll be awfully warm. Easter weekend, very warm and probably mostly dry. That's Saturday, and the ridge is stronger from the Gulf. The uh, wave action way, way up north. So, again, that day should be warm and dry with mid-80s, and somebody might hit upper 80s. I mean, you'll think it's the 4th of July instead of Easter weekend, and the same thing on Sunday. Although another front tries to ease in here from the north. We'll watch that, but again, for now, Easter looks uh, relatively dry. Monday of next week, the ridge is still holding over the southeast. Big trough out west. Down below that, a new surface low over the nation's breadbasket. Could be some more rough weather there southeast of that low. Tuesday, the initial low lifts up toward Minneapolis-St. Paul. Middle of next week, another low forms over southern Missouri. And on the 28th, that stuff finally gets in here. At some point toward the middle of next week, we could clearly have some issues with severe weather. But at this phase of the game, it's just too early to call it specifically. And on May 5th, the end of the forecast, uh, ridging over the south-central states. Kind of a high-amplitude pattern, trough on the west coast, trough off the east coast, ridging here. And uh, if that's right, that would be very warm and very dry. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog the next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening and God bless. Being Alabama's news leader means digging deeper to get you the facts, working harder so you have all sides of the story and not being afraid to tell the truth. Every day you award us by making ABC 3340 Alabama's most watched news. And now the Associated Press has named us Alabama's most outstanding news operation. That's nine times since 1996, more than all other stations combined. And that's nine more reasons you should trust the news leader. ABC 3340.